Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah, I think we got it. Oh, we're live. What's up, guys? Hotcha Frontier back at it again with another video. And in this video, guys, I'm going to be ranking what I think the top staples of the current meta are post duels nexus starting off with our categories we have top staple we have consider playing situational certain decks and copium copium meaning not this format but guys before we go ahead and get started with the video i want to give a huge shout out to my channel sponsor and that is mono grading collectibles they're an amazing grading company that uses accurate consistent ai to grade your cards plus they grade a bunch of tcg card games so there's no amount that they won't grade definitely consider grading with them today and use my code hotshot for 20% off your entire order. But thank you guys so much. Let's go ahead and get right into the video. It's triple tactic talents. That is obviously a top staple card. It is a change of heart. It is a draw two. It is a rip out of one out of your opponent's hand. Come on guys, that's no brainer. This next card is really cool because it just came out of Duelist Nexus as a normal spell card. And that is the Sinful Spoils of Subversion Snake Eye. What this card does is you can target one card one monster on the field, either field, and bounce it to the spell and trap card zone. Really cool to get out a bunch of monster negates if they don't say spell and trap card negates, which is pretty awesome, or at least get rid of something. Now, my side of it, I think that it's really good for pendulum decks because a lot of times you kind of have that scale that you want on field and you want it back to your scale zone. So you can go ahead and bounce that back to your scale zone. Also, you can probably interrupt your opponent's scales too. So I think it has a lot of applications. For now, I'm gonna say certain decks because I believe this specific card gets more support in the next upcoming set age of overlord but yeah i think it has some really good applications we just have to wait and see moving on we have dark hole and dark hole is very situational i think there are two ways you can use dark hole you can go ahead and try to out your opponent's stuff the second way though is having it interact with your deck so let's say you go ahead you're going second your opponent has a whole board you dark hole let's say somehow it goes through but what you could do is play this with unchained and you guys know that also got new support from Duelist Nexus, and you can also interact with that. It destroys everything. You can go off of your unchain effects, so you kind of get like double value off of it. Now, if you have a whole board, your opponent has a whole board, you can't really dark hole because you're going to be hurting yourself. So you really have to consider those types of plays. But moving on, guys, we have Cross Out Designator, and definitely consider playing it. I think this card is pretty prevalent. It's really good against Droll, especially if you're also playing Droll too. So you really want to consider these type of hand traps but even monster names in general is amazing in the um, mirror match, of course. But I think going, you know, when it, this card came out, it wasn't as good, but it has now seen a lot of play in our meta. Next up we have is the Harpy's Feather Duster. Definitely a top staple, destroys everything. All the back row decks fear this card. <laughs> this is what they saved the Solemn Judgment for. Next up we have is Raigeki. Again, situational. I think if you can fit it in your deck, you might as well go ahead and try to, but if not, um, I think Dark Hole is a lot better, especially interacting with yourself. Uh, we have the Solemn Judgment, definitely certain decks, trap-based decks, of course, you guys know, you don't just put this in anything. You could put it in side deck, and you definitely can side deck it, but I think overall, uh, people are playing heavily in the Bistials in the side decks, so a lot of spaces, you know, there's less space, and you're really running like uh, two or three copies of this. I don't see people playing running one, so you need as much side deck space as you can get. Next up, guys, we have is Book of Mood, and that's definitely a top staple Yu-Gi-Oh card. This is in everyone's decks. I mean, it's really good. You can set it at least going first, using it going second, at least out something, if not, uh, definitely use the effect to bounce, put something face down, which is really cool. We have a lot of other book mon uh, spell cards on this list as well, but we'll get to them when we get to them. Next up on the list we have is Call by the Grave. And you guys already know, Call by the Grave is definitely considered playing it. This is an amazing Yu-Gi-Oh card. That's why Konami limited to one, especially for the uh, cross out designator coming to the TCG. But yeah, that's considered playing if you have the room. Change of heart, I would say certain decks, it can be situational, honestly. The reason being is that you rather just play triple tactic uh, talents but it doesn't have the effect where you, your opponent has to play something on your turn, so you could use it. But in my opinion, I think Talents is just way better. Uh, moving on, we have the Click and Echo, also came out from Duelist Nexus. I'm gonna read you guys that really quick, but you can only use this for a Link Summon, and this card can act, cannot actually be tributed um, at all while it's on the field, but it has the effect where while this card that was summoned by the effect of um, dumping it with the Link Monster, it's supposed to summon to your opponent's field in defense mode, your opponent reveals their hand. So that's actually really cool. It's good information to see um, how you kind of want to take it from there. But I think right now it's Copium. I wanted to see this in like Sprite, but not even, they're not really playing it as well. But 
maybe in the future, definitely, is a card to look out for. And it's only a common too, so definitely get your copies. Uh, moving on, we have Cosmic Cyclone. And Cosmic Cyclone is very situational. It's definitely a side deck staple for sure because there are a lot of stone traps that cannot be destroyed by card effects. And Banishing is a really strong mechanic. But you want to be very careful against Kashtira, of course. Um, next up we have is Super Polymerization. And I'm actually going to say Super Polymerization is a top staple Yu-Gi-Oh card at the moment. You know, I love how we're seeing new types of ways to use Super Polymerization, especially since you can now use the Draco Quest, summon that with Super Poly, and you can poly off their Maroon de Fleur and the uh, Calamity Dragon, which is pretty good, honestly, if you want to keep up your play and, you know, not basically surrender and then go into your game two or three state. But yeah, consider playing that, honestly. We have <laughs> the Panker Tops, and honestly, Panker Tops is cat... Uh, cope <laughs> i was gonna say cat but yeah it really is copium because it's just it's limited to one and fender is so much better you guys already know next up we have is eternal tribute and i want to say certain decks but i'm just gonna say copium because there are a lot of decks where you don't want to destroy their monsters you kind of want to just get them off the field bounce them or banish them in some cases and i think even against like tier limits you didn't want to use uh torrental tribute because i think that's around the era where it sort of kind of died off Plus, there are a lot of amazing trap cards that you can use um, instead of this card. But next up we have is the Solemn Strike. And Solemn Strike, I would say, is situational. It is, again, another card that you would use in the um, side deck. But at the same time, there are, there are so many different cards you could be using. Yeah, I keep saying Next up we have is the Solemn Strike, and that's definitely situational. Reason being is that there are a lot of cards in the side deck that you know you need and solemn strike is a card that you do need but it depends like if you're running a heavy bestial package in there then you already are out a lot of space but if you can fit it in there it's definitely a good card to use i just think that the solemn cards are slowly falling off you know it's exactly with the next card which is the solemn warning is probably copium i think that uh it probably goes like judgment uh strike in certain situations or even strike judgment then it's like warning that's heavily back before then where people were running even all three in their side deck. Next up we have is Evenly Matched, and that's definitely a top staple card. A lot of decks are main decking it, which is really cool. If not, usually you just side deck it. For our next staple, we have Book of Lunar Eclipse, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in Copium. I think personally there are better book cards to be using right now, but if you think different, let me know down below. And also guys, make sure to check out my recent budget tier list video I did last week and let me know your thoughts on that. But moving on, we have the Dogmatica Punishment. I'm gonna put that in certain decks because it has a lot of the extra deck monsters where you can send and get additional effects off of it. And it's really good in certain decks, to be honest. Next up is the Daruma Cannon Trap Card. I'm gonna put that in Situational. It is a very good card. I actually to the point where it's been getting hyped up, but changing everything to face down mode is pretty powerful in the meta right now, but we'll see. Next up we have is another new card from Duelist Nexus. I'm gonna read that to you guys right now, but I believe it's called Aqua Chorus Round. So what this card does is you banish one card from your hand. Now your next standby phase, you can add up to two cards with the same name as that banished card. So you don't get that banished card back at all, but the other effect is if you activate this card while your opponent controls no cards, for the rest of this turn, you cannot activate cards or the effect of cards with the same original name as that banished card. So I'm thinking this might have utility in decks like trap based decks where you really just like set by pass, really set three pass, you're activating this card to get something in your next standby phase. It's very bad going second to a point. I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth with this card to be honest. I don't think it's copium. I'm going to say certain decks, but you guys let me know down below. And also, did you even know that this card was in Duels Nexus? Because I didn't. It was a common, actually. Next up on the list is Forbidden Drip. I'm going to put that as a top staple card. Reason being is that even though it has been seen less and less play, it's still an insane card that can stop pretty much every type of card, monster, trap, and spell. So that's kind of awesome. Uh, moving on, we have the Fusion Aramid, I believe. And I'm going to say very... I'm actually going to put certain decks because you have to be running some type of fusion-based deck to play this card you can't run a smaller engine but i think where this card shines is a pure fusion type deck next up we have is ice dragon's prison which i'm going to put certain decks i think trap based decks get more of a benefit from it it's just that you have so many different types of traps you could be playing in your deck like i was saying with torrential i think ice dragons is way better than torrential is uh moving on we have is the ultimate slayer and i'm going to put that in certain decks same thing with domatic punishment cards like that are really really good i think they blossom in decks that are playing more of that extra deck space to go ahead and interact like going chain link one chain link two after you play this card 
Um, moving on, we have the mind control, which I'm gonna say copium. There are a lot of better cards in the game right now, like change of heart. Um, th this card you take, you can't be, you cannot be attributed to, which is a very like niche little thing, but you never know on those like really, really big games. Moving on, we have the rivalry of the warlords and certain decks, of course, like trap based decks can play this card. The next card we have guys is silent graveyard. I'm actually gonna put silent graveyard, consider playing. Um, that may be a little like, whoa, what are you doing? But you have to realize is that we're very heavily dependent on the graveyard as it is, and this shuts down your opponent completely. So that's awesome to have. Next up we have is another new card from Duelist Nexus, and I'm gonna pull it up. It is the Toku Sano Shink Yojin. Hopefully I said that correctly, but moving on to the effect we have, it says send monsters from your hand and or face of field to the graveyard, whose total levels equal 10, and then you draw two cards. So it's like Pot of Greed with a little extra, but this card is pretty awesome. I think with certain decks, you'll see this card shine 100%. Um, I'm curious to see because I love how it says equals to 10. So you can have different levels in your hand equals and then you draw two. It doesn't have to be like you need two level 10 monsters and send it to a graveyard and here you go. No, this card's really unique though. So give it time. We're going to see how this blossoms. Next up, guys, we have is TTT and that goes top staple, of course, because any spell and trap cards you're playing at max three, you're playing at a six now, which is incredible in this metagame. But moving on, we have Tark Ruler No More, and I'm going to say consider playing it in the side deck. Some people actually run it in the main deck too, but yeah, this card's absolutely crazy. Next up, guys, we have is Cash Tier Fenrir, and that is a top staple Yuga card. Reason being, it has so many applications. Other decks can run it. It's a better Tanker Tops, and it can search itself too, so you can slowly thin out your deck. You guys already know, though. We have Lightning Storm, and that is Consider Playing. Reason being is that it's semi-limited. People are still running it. I think that a lot of people are, again, making room for that Bestial package in the extra deck, so some people might not be. But yeah, Lightning Storm is just an OP Yuga card. Uh, all you need to do is control no face of cards on the field and that's easily done so yeah that definitely consider playing that next up is macro cosmos and that's very situational especially if your deck can um run those type of cards they'll benefit off of that like weather painters um you have flunderies you have uh grand maju they're really good decks but other decks are kind of like and eh, you're less likely to run that card next up is goes and match and goes and match is definitely a certain decks type for the tier list reason being is i believe again mono decks really benefit from having this like salmon gray a uh, marine cess so consider decks like that to put this card in next up guys we have is forbidden lands now it doesn't have the application like book of moon does but it's still a really good new card and i'm going to give it its praise and put it in situational next up guys we have is the dimensional fissure which is you know really good in certain decks now that i'm thinking about it i'm actually going to put the macrocosmos along with it because those two together are usually seen a lot in like Flanderies or Weather Painters or again like Grand Maju. So definitely consider these type of cards for those type of decks. But moving on, we have is the Enemy Controller Econ, which I'm going to say situational. It used to be where you take their uh, one monster and that basically ends their turn. But a lot of decks have so many combo lines where um, other cards on this list above are better worth playing than Econ at the moment. But we'll leave it there. You never know. Econ might actually go up in terms of um, playability. Almost done with the list, we have Book of Eclipse. Almost done for a list, we have Book of Eclipse. And I'm going to say consider playing it. I actually say you should play both Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse together in the deck if you can. Maybe like 3-2 or 2-2. Two, two. But yeah, they're both really good together. And especially if you can clear all your opponent's monsters that you turn face down, they're not drawing anything, which is really good. Next up we have is Dimensional Barrier, and that's definitely considered playing. I would say top staple, but I think the top staples won't get hit at all. Now, <laughs> Dimensional Barrier is a card where it says, no, you can't do the synchro mechanic. You can't do the XYZ mechanic. You can't do this fusion mechanic. And that's usually frowned upon in the community. But I would say use it now before it gets banned or at least hit to one. Uh, moving on we have there can only be one and same thing it's like a certain type of deck situation where it's like goes and match and rivalry of the warlords where it's really good in certain decks but guys looks like that is the end of our sables tier list for the meta post duelist nexus if you guys agree for picks let me know down below but guys if you like the video make sure to give it a huge like comment down below what do you think of our picks did we miss anything anything important and guys if you're not subscribed to the channel what are you doing? Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you're updated the moment I upload new videos. But guys, that's it for me. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.